In this video, we're looking at the Tenda 01 wireless bridge. I bought a pair for 64 Canadian dollars from AliExpress. Tenda is a Chinese company that has some distribution in North America. I've seen some of their home routers and mesh Wi-Fi products for sale here, but I don't have any experience with them. Unlike a lot of generic AliExpress stuff, they do have an English website where you can find firmware updates and other info. The included paper manuals are all Chinese, but you can download some English translated PDFs from their website. The 2.4 GHz O1 bridges that I bought actually came as a set of two in one box that were pre-configured to link up with each other. This is okay, though you should really log into these manually, set up your own passwords, and make sure that the wireless country code is changed to the country you live in. This is to make sure that it's not going to cause problems like interfering with something like cellular in your country. When I looked at the Tenda O1 for the first time, the design felt like it was inspired by the older Ubiquiti nanostation Loco M series. Despite looking like a knockoff of an older product, the build quality is actually pretty decent for the price. The case feels pretty sturdy and the port cover fits together well. The pole bracket has some screw holes for wall mounting, but it doesn't have any vertical tilt adjustment. Though with a 30 degree tall antenna pattern, you shouldn't need tilt in most deployments. Taking it apart shows a pretty simple PCB antenna that appears to be dual polarity. It also has some light pipes and black foam to better direct the light from the status LEDs outside of the case. As far as chips go, there's a Realtek RTL8196E system on a chip and a separate Realtek RTL8192ER Wi-Fi chip. There's no heat sinks on these chips, which could be a problem in warmer climates. The Ethernet ports on the O1 are 100 megabits, though this likely won't bottleneck the 2.4 GHz 802.11n Wi-Fi too much. The included power over Ethernet adapter outputs 9 volts, which is below the 24 volts that most other similar PTP bridges use. This lower voltage PoE could cause issues if you need a long cable run between the power supply and the bridge. As for other accessories in the box, we get some hose clamps to mount the O1. To start off the setup, we're going to power them up. We're going to take the PoE injector and connect the PoE port to one of the bridges. Then we're going to connect the other bridge in the same way. We'll then connect our computer to the LAN side of the unit with the 192.168.2.1 IP address on the back sticker. We'll open up the network settings on the computer, go into the Ethernet settings, and click on the Edit button next to IP Assignment. In this window, we're going to set the IP assignment to manual, put in an IP address of 192.168.2.5 and a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, then click Save. Now open up a web browser and enter the IP address 192.168.2.1 into the address bar. You should get a login page and you can log in using admin for both the username and the password. It should now launch into the quick setup. For this first one, we'll be setting it up in AP mode, so select that and click Next. For the SSID, put in whatever you'd like, but I'd suggest making something very different from your regular home Wi-Fi name. For the channel, I'd suggest 1, 6, or 11, and preferably something that doesn't overlap your home Wi-Fi, but if you're not sure, auto should generally work. For the key, this is going to be the wireless password, and you'll make this anything as long as it's at least 8 characters. Once you have that filled in, click Next. On this screen, you can click Save, and the device will reboot. You can once again log in with admin and admin. The quick setup really only sets the mode and some of the wireless settings, but we'll want to go into the wireless settings and make sure the country is set appropriately. In my case, I'll make sure to set it to Canada to ensure the wireless transmitter says sorry often enough. Other options on here will be the transmit power, which can be adjusted after installation if needed, and the channel bandwidth, which you should probably leave at 20 MHz, but if you're in an area with quiet enough wireless, you could get a bit more speed by setting it to 40 MHz. In the network menu, you can change the IP address to fit your home network and make them easier to access. We'll come back to this later. So that's all you need on the AP side. Now we're going to move our laptop's LAN cable out of the first bridge and into the second one. We can use the IP address of 192.168.2.2 to get into this one. Password again is admin and admin. On the quick setup, we'll pick client and click next. It should scan for any networks it can pick up and show you a list. We'll select the network we just set up earlier and click next. Fill in the settings on this page with what you put in the other unit and click next. I'm going to leave this IP alone and change it later, so I'll click next and then save. Once again, we'll log back into it. 
Now if we go to the status page, we should see that the units are connected and the signal strength is displayed here along with other statistics. The last thing we'll do is change the IP addresses. I'll start with the AP side which I should now be able to access by going into the address bar and typing in the IP address of the access point. I'll go into the networking menu, change it to one of the free IPs on the network that we found earlier, and click save. I'll then go back to the client side and do the same, using the second free IP address that we found. We won't be able to access them yet since we still have the static IP address set up in our Ethernet port. So I'll connect the AP side of the bridge into my home router's LAN port with another network cable. I'll go back into the computer's network settings and set it to an automatic IP address. If everything is working right, our computer should have an internet connection right now and we should also be able to get into both sides of the bridge using their new IPs. To double check everything is fine, make sure your computer's Wi-Fi is disabled so you know access is going through the bridge. I tested this PTP bridge out by setting it up in my basement just under 40 feet apart with a laptop running the iPerf3 test on each side. The signal was very strong, but I was only seeing an average of 58 megabits per second regardless of the channel I put it on. Increasing the channel size from 20 megahertz to 40 megahertz wide on paper should improve things, but in reality with this 802.11n stuff in the 2.4 gigahertz band, it made it about a megabit worse on average. I ran the ping tracer for a couple minutes and the latency averaged 3 milliseconds, but there was a bit of jitter and one drop packet. I have a dozen or so other networks visible from my neighbors, plus my own Wi-Fi stuff, so there's likely to be a bit of interference here. When I tested power consumption, I saw the AP side idle at 1.1 watts and under load I was seeing about 1.5 watts, which is one of the lowest I've seen so far. Despite being the cheapest device I've tested, the build quality is pretty good, and I do like that the manufacturer is releasing updates and documentation for it on their website. The setup process is pretty easy thanks to the clean web interface, and the performance I got with the short test is fine for most things. Unfortunately, the O1 is held back by its 802.11n 2.4GHz wireless. Relative to other bridges, it's not as fast and it's susceptible to interference from other 2.4GHz devices. I'm also a bit surprised there isn't a heatsink on any of the chips inside, so I'm not sure if that'll hurt its reliability or performance in warmer climates. The 9V power over Ethernet is also a bit of a weird choice considering almost every other competing device will use 24 volts. And finally, long-term reliability is also a bit unknown. I will say this device is worth using for something that isn't too critical, like extending your Wi-Fi out to a garage or something. It's cheap, easy to use, and built pretty well.